G'day from Australia. My name is Ashley Davis. Welcome to my coding live stream. These sessions are recorded live but available on YouTube later for you to watch at any time. We are building the Photosphere application while I try to explain how I'm doing it while I'm doing it. Please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. You can see my handle on the screen. Before we get into coding, I'll start with the tradition we have here in Australia. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land from which I'm broadcasting. I'd also like to pay my respects to elders past and present. So I'm doing these live streams to support my book, Rapid Full Stack Development. Please check it out at rapidfullstackdevelopment.com. You can read the first chapter for free online. To catch up on everything that we've done so far in this live stream series, please check out Code Capers on YouTube. If you go to Playlists, find the Rapid Full Stack Development Playlist, click View Playlist, and you'll find all the previous episodes leading up to today, all the work that we've done previously to get to where we are now. All the code that I'm developing in this live stream is available on GitHub. Find Rapid Full Stack Development on GitHub. You'll see a bunch of repositories. Uh, the code repositories we're working with today, uh, mostly the front end, so we're, we're working uh, towards completing the first version of the Photosphere front end. So that's the Photosphere front end live stream. We're also using the back end now. So in the last session, we connected the front end to the monolithic back end, and we're moving forward today to be able to get photos to upload to the back end, not, not just be able to view them, but upload them as well. Okay, let's just get straight into it. So I've got multiple terminals open here, just and just to avoid confusion, I'm going to name them today. So this is going to be my back end terminal. This will be where I run the front end. And the, the third one, probably just, you know, git commits, doing other stuff, whatever I need to do. I, I might name that later if I need to. I've got a bunch of loose ends to follow up on, right? Um, and I've been saving some of them and I keep saving them, but I just, I, I've got a couple that I need to deal with this morning and I've still got more that I need to deal with, which, but I'll deal with some others in the next session as well. Some of them that I've been promising you. I really want to get onto photo upload today. So at the end of today's session, we're going to be able to use the front end to upload photos to Photosphere. So that's a really important stepping stone. So I've got a bunch of code repositories here that I've been working with. In this terminal, I want the, I want the back end. <clears throat> I'll just start Visual Studio Code from here. I will start up my back end. Actually, I'm going to start it. I'm starting it in development mode. So that gives me live reload. So I can edit the code in the back end and have it automatically reload, you know, without having to restart it, which is kind of cool. One of the problems I had in the previous session was that I prepared some sample assets, some sample photos to be, uh, to be able to upload to this backend, but they didn't work. <laughs> and the reason why, bizarrely, was that they had the wrong file extension. So they had this file extension that was like JFIF or something like that. And I was just messing around with it. I did a bit of Googling to find out what that, what, what, what that extension was all about. I don't know why they had that extension when I kind of downloaded them using Chrome. But when I renamed my test assets, assets you can see them here. When I renamed my test assets, uh, test assets so they had a JPEG extension, they just started working. <laughs> so problem solved. I've started my back end. I've got my instant database running, my development database. I'm going to upload some test assets. And I'm just going to, starting from where I left off in the last session, I'm just going to test that my front end photo gallery still works with the assets that I've uploaded through my, my REST script here, which I'll show you in a second. So this is backend.http. So this is a VS Code REST client script. It used to just upload a placeholder asset. Now I've now I've integrated my JPEG test assets in here. So you can see all these. Uh, each one of these is a HTTP POST request. So that's posting to the asset URL in the back end. And this, this bit of uh, syntax here is uploading the actual file. That's the body of the HD POST. I'm, I'm setting width and height. Now I'll pull these, out of, uh, these values out of the Unsplash API, the test data that I uh, downloaded many sessions ago. Probably not a good idea to upload or, or set your width and height through headers. I can't really set them through the body because I'm posting the, the binary data as the body of this request. So there's probably a better way to do this, but I, I just need to keep moving forward. I need to keep moving forward. This is going to work nicely with the front end. You'll see in a moment what I'm going to do with that. Ideally, ideally, I'd like to be able to compute width and height, like load the image in the back end and compute all that in the back end and, and save that information into my database. But that's a problem for another day. And I honestly, I don't really want to weigh down my front end with, or sorry, my, my back end with that kind of computation. This is probably a good scenario to use a microservice actually. But that's something I'm going to come back to maybe in a future live stream series, because at some point in the future, I'm hoping to 
convert this monolithic backend to a microservices backend, but that's not something we're worrying about today. So I'm just taking the easy route at the moment, the, the, the path of least resistance, and I basically coded my backend to be able to kind of, you know, take width and height as uh, headers to this request and to be able to save them in the database from there. Before I run any of these, I'll just check my assets route. So this is, this is exercising the HTTP get assets route. If I send that request, you can see that I come back with an empty array of assets. And now I can upload each of my test assets in turn. So I'm just clicking send request for all these. This, this whole thing is enabled by a, a Visual Studio plugin called VS Code REST Client. It's brilliant. So I'm uploading each of my assets. I've uploaded three assets. And now when I get my uh, assets request here, put this where we can see it. So you can see here that when I make that request, I'm listing all the assets that I've got that I've uploaded to my back end. So that's cool. You know, another thing that I'd got wrong in the last session was that I tried using those JPEG uh, assets with the content type of PNG. So I've made sure this time that my test data is correct with a content type that's set to JPEG. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to try looking at these in the gallery. So that's just picking up where I left off really in the last session. So let's go into the front end repo. <coughs> I'll open Visual Studio Code from there as well. Now I shouldn't be doing anything today that's going to break my tests, but I'm just going to try running my automated tests just to make sure that I'm starting from a point where everything is working. And so I can check at the end of this session, you know, just to make sure all my tests are still working okay. Cool, so I've got a, a suite of passing tests here. That's what I was looking for. I'm probably not gonna need to run my tests again um, this session. I'm, I might run them again at the end. If I change any code that I think might break the tests, then I will, I will run the tests again for sure. You know, there's a good chance I won't need to do that. So I'm just going to run my front end and we'll test that the gallery works from the test assets we just uploaded. So I'm running npm start here, which is basically delegated to the parcel dev server, which means I can open a, a web page. So that's looking pretty good. I've got my three test assets rendered here. I'm going to open the dev tools and just make sure that there's no errors in the console. That looks good. So that's kind of my starting point. Now, just in case we have to make any other changes to the back end, I'm just going to do some git committing just to... Uh, Get those changes in that I that I've got there. The that's the test assets is what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to double check that. So that's the changes to my rest my rest script. All looking good. Okay, so let's get an upload page in. At the moment in AppJS, you can see here it's just rendering the gallery. It's rendering the gallery directory directly in the app component here. I've got to refactor this before I can start using something like React Router to be able to have kind of multiple sub pages in this, uh, what is going to be now a single page application. I need to kind of factor some of this into a sub page, like a gallery page, because I want to have separate pages for gallery and upload. So let's do that. The simplest way we can do that is just do a save as. So I'm just going to do a save as, and I'll call this gallery page, and, uh, and it won't be called app. I'll rename it to be gallery page. I'll leave my test data there. So you can see up at the top here, I've got some commented out test data. Oh, base URL, that's another thing that I've got to fix. That shouldn't be hard coded here to, to, to localhost. I'm gonna be changing that to an environment variable, but I'm probably not gonna do that until the next session, just because I really wanna crack on with getting this um, upload working. I think just copying this component, it, what was the app component, renaming it to gallery page is enough to make that a separate page on its own. And of course, I've got to use that now from the app component. So what I wanna do instead of rendering the gallery, I want to render the gallery page, and there's no, no props I need to pass in for that. I don't have to do any of this kind of setup stuff that I was doing before. All my gallery test data has been moved to the gallery page, so get rid of that. Don't need that. Cool. I just let it autocomplete. See that? I just, I just started typing that again just so it would autocomplete the import for me. Saves a bit of time and a bit of frustration typing stuff in if you can get that autocomplete to work. I've just done a refactor. I'm gonna test this now. I wanna make sure it still works. So just do a refresh just to make sure it did refresh. Yep, no errors in the log, seems to be working. But the question now is, is when you do this, is did I actually make something, make a change that affected this? And one way you can be sure is you can just inject something in here. I'll do it, I'll do it just here. So I'll change that to a div. So I don't have any other way of knowing visually that my change actually works. So I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to force it to, to do something. Yep. So see, you can see there. So I'm just forcing it to show me that it, that my change actually did something and that there were no errors uh, in that thing that I did. So I'm just going to put this back the way it was. That's working. Um, this shouldn't affect my tests because my tests only, only really test the, um, the gallery layout function so, and I haven't changed that. So I'm going to do a commit at this point. Do a quick uh, git diff here and see what I've changed. 
So that's all the stuff that's been removed from the app component. That's all good. And in the app component, I'm now rendering the gallery page instead of the gallery. So just doing a bit of self-review here. Now, some people might say, like, that's just too small a thing to commit, right? But I say, no way, because at this point, I know I haven't broken anything. I know that all the code that I've committed is working. Uh, at least, you know, like, I haven't seen any problems with it. That doesn't mean there's not bugs hiding. But to the best of my knowledge, there's no bugs in this code. There's no visual issues. Um, the test should still work. So I've got, a, I've got something to step back to. If I make a major mistake now and I need to uh, get reset, I can set back to something that I know works. So I'm never going to waste my time. I'm, I'm doing these small commits of, you know, banking up working code, but I'm never going to waste my time, you know, when I have to revert something that didn't work out. This is where I need React Router. So I've got, I've got the web page open for that. I'll show you. So this is the web page for React Router. You know, it's a great thing for, for building, you know, separate routes in a single page application, like what I'm doing with Photosphere. Um, there's heaps of good uh, tutorials and examples that you can get going through here. I thoroughly recommend that you have a read of this, um, you know, Always have a good read of the docs for things that you're using. I'm just going to dive straight in and start using this. First of all, we need to install it. Now, I'm still running the front end. I'm going to try installing this package while we're still running the front end. It'll automatically reload. It's got the live reload there, so it shouldn't be a problem. And it should just do what we expect, hopefully. So I'm going to npm install React Router. While that's installing, I can start to update my app component here. Well, that's already installed. That's good. So I need browser router. React Router, and I'm basically just going to enclose my gallery in that. Actually, I think it's, yeah, it's React Router DOM that I need. And I'm also going to need route routes. So you, you can get all this information about how to do this from their, from their getting started guide, from their tutorials uh, and examples. This is not something that I just magically know. Uh, I wouldn't know this if I hadn't read their docs. So we're going to put the gallery under a route of its own, and we'll just put it under the root route there. So, and the element to render is the gallery itself. So I'm just going to test that this still works. So that this should look the same as what it did before, hopefully. Oh, there's an error. I'm just going to have a quick look at their docs because I'm not sure what I've done wrong here. Do they have a getting started? Oh no, so they are using React Router DOM. So that's the second one. I thought I, it was right. Sometimes it's just really hard to remember these things. And you have to just look at the docs. Did I did I install the wrong thing? Oh yeah. Look, I didn't I install I didn't install the, the, the DOM thing. I don't, I don't know. That might, maybe that's the old um, maybe that's the old version of React Router or something. Yeah, these are the problems that we hit when we're, when we're developing. Maybe I should have just followed the getting started guide instead of trying to do it from memory. Hopefully this will give us a, a working web page anyway. I'm gonna just gonna try uh, restarting the dev server. Oh. I was just restarting the dev server and it seemed to come good while I was doing that. Anyway, I'll restart it. Okay, good. A bit of fumbling there, but we got there in the end. I'm just, what I'm going to do here is I could, I could commit at this point. It just, it doesn't seem worth it um, because I can easily add a new route now and I can call it upload and I'll make it uh, an upload page. So let's create this upload page. I'll make a new file, call it uploadpage.js and let's make a new React component. And all this has to do at the moment is just be a stub. I'll just make it a stub and I'll, let it, I'll flesh it out more fully in a moment. So hopefully that's all we need for that. And if I go back to my app component, I'll bring in the upload page. Oh, update page. Upload page is what we want. Upload page. Okay, and I should be able to go to slash upload now and see hello. So cool. That's a good stepping stone. And we're going to get into some more complicated stuff now. So I, I am just going to commit now before we get into the more complicated stuff. I've uh, installed React Router DOM. There's going to be a bunch of stuff in the package lock file that we don't care about. There are better ways to review your code than this as well. Normally I use a UI called Fork, but just trying to do everything from the command line just for the purposes of the live stream. But using a UI for Git is fine. Like, like it's totally okay. It's good to know the command line as well, obviously, but using a UI is, is often more productive. So just looking at the routes that I've added here in my app component, that's all good. Good, good. Now we'll add a little bit of a header to our main page here so that we can change between the upload page uh, and the gallery. 
I don't want to do anything fancy with CSS, and I'm a terrible web designer anyway, so like I'll, I'll just make it look ugly, and then someone else can make it look beautiful maybe later. So I'm just going to make a, a really simple header uh, inside the browser router here. It's got to be inside the browser router, like if you want to use the link component, which I'm going to add to my uh, import up here. It's got the link component, and let's make a link to the main page, which is the gallery, and we'll call that uh, the home page. And uh, I'm just going to put in a couple of spaces here, I think, just to make it look. You, you should use CSS for this kind of thing, but I just don't want to stuff around with that. Hopefully that's going to get a nice little kind of vertical bar between my links. Make another link here to the upload page, which we'll call upload. Now that should allow us to change between them. I'm just going to check the web page to make sure of that. So you can see we've got a little header here. Not very, not very exciting at all, but uh, we can change to the upload page and back to the home page now. So that's a nice little step forward. I might even, I might even just quickly commit that. So a very simple change there. Nothing much to review. Small changes are easy to review. It's a, it's a benefit of doing small changes. Okay, so that's it. Let's get to the real good stuff. Actually, uploading some files. Now, this is simpler uh, than you would imagine, but it is difficult to learn, and I have done this before, and so I do kind of know what I'm doing here. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you some of the some of the tricks that help you understand how to do this kind of thing as well. Um, so we're going to have an upload sort of component here, and we'll just give the user some instructions. There's some nice little instructions for the user there. We're going to use a standard input component. Now, normally, if I was using like a CSS framework like Ant Design, it has some really good kind of um, kind of input uh, controls that allow you to do drag and drop and stuff like that. I'm trying to do every, everything from scratch here for a reason. I'm trying to show you that you don't you don't necessarily need frameworks like Ant Design or um, what are the other ones like Blueprint JS is another one that I like to use. They're great. They can help you make beautiful looking um, web applications. Uh, but they aren't necessary, uh, and I'm trying to do everything from scratch. Later on, for Photosphere, I probably am going to bring a CSS framework online, but it's just not something I'm concerned with now. I'm, what I'm concerned with is functionality. So the type of input is going to be a file input. I want to allow multiple files to be uploaded at once. So set multiple to true. Now I've got to change. I'm going to have a, an on change event handler. And let's just make that be a function. And you can do stuff like any any uh, React function. You can get the event. Just start by console logging it. If you don't know what you're doing, um, I mean, you have to kind of read the React docs and you know <laughs> Mozilla docs and stuff to learn about um, event objects. And 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 I would definitely recommend doing it to become better at understanding what's going on. But you know, you can learn a lot just by doing the console log. You really can. Let's go to our upload page. We should have uh, the stuff that we just added and be able to choose files. And when we choose a file, okay. So I've got some test assets here. So I'm going to select one of these test assets and we'll have a look at what our console.log says about it. So we've got a synthetic base event. So Google, uh, if you want to learn about it, Google React Synthetic Events. It'll tell you more about it. There's a whole bunch of interesting stuff here you can learn just by kind of having a look at this. There's, there's the actual input element. What can we pull out of this? It's interesting. Look at this. There's a file list here. Isn't that interesting? Who needs the docs when you can just console log it? and then search through to find what you're looking for. And you can see here, one.jpg, that's the file that we selected, the size of it. So let's dig a little bit deeper. Let's change our console log here to be event, what was it, dot .target, I think, event.target.files. So just digging a little bit deeper to see what we find. It's automatically refreshed. I'm going to choose the file again. And you can see here we've just printed out our file list. You want to dig a little bit deeper? We don't really need to, but it's an array, right? So you can kind of index it with a zero to see the first element. Um, and then we could choose, you know, we could choose multiple files and it'll only show us, it'll only console log out that first, the details of that first file. I do want to kind of handle this. I don't want to handle this in an inline function. It's just a little bit, a little bit nicer uh, to have an event handler here. So I will have uh, event handler called on files changed. And so I don't have to bind this, which I really hate doing. I'm just going to make it, I'll make it be like a fat arrow kind of, anonymous function type thing, and just assign it to this property called on files change. Um, that just makes it a little bit simpler to work with um, in React. Um, I could, what I could do here is I could, I could do that console log again, just to make sure my files are coming through. Again, I'm just taking simple steps, and I'm going to call that function. So this dot on files changed event dot target dot files. 
So I've pretty much got the same thing here. If I choose a file, I'll choose all the files again, and I get a list of files. But here I should be coming, and again, if you just want to make sure that the code that you expect to be running is there, you can put something in here like this, like, you know, which, which function is it that we are actually running, just to confirm that the browser has accepted our change. Because, you know, sometimes weird things happen, and you could be trying to debug this, and it's not running the code you think it's running. But it is. I know I confirm that it is because I've got that little text coming out in the console log. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my state here. So set the state of my React component to be these files that are coming through. And that'll cause a re-render. So that'll cause a re-render of this page. And we can actually, you know, we can display a list of the files, some information about them, whatever we want. I think I've got a problem here, though. Let me just check. It's probably going to have an error. Well, no, it didn't. Okay, that's cool. So let's try and print some information about these files. So if state.files is not equal to undefined, let's render something. And what I'll do is I'll map over these files and just render the name of each one. That'll be a good little test, I think. And of course, we need a key for each one. Otherwise, React will complain at us. Usually, I forget to do this. Uh, I'll probably just use the name. That's not fine. And we'll just print out the name of each file. That's enough. We could print out the size. That would, that would be useful information for our user as well. And what's going on here? I've got an error. Ah, this is the problem I thought I was going to get uh, here. Uh, but I, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to read the state object, and the state object is null. So I, like, I know this because I've hit this error before. But just to confirm, if you ever suspect you've got a problem, Always a good idea just to confirm that you've got it. So I'm just going to log out the state here. Maybe I'll just actually put a thing there to say this is the state. Look for my thing, state. Yeah, see, the state is null. So the thing that you've got to do is you've got to initialize the state. So we'll do that in the constructor. Okay, it's not just enough to have a constructor by itself for React, though. You've got to actually deal with your props and pass them onto the base, the base class. Hopefully that's enough to get rid of that error. So that's looking cool. So we've got a, we've actually got a state object there now. It's got nothing in it yet. I'll, I'll leave that there actually. I'll leave that console log there for a moment because you'll see uh, what it's going to look like once we add the files. So let's just add the files. Well, another error. What's going on here? So we do have some files, but we can't map over them. I wonder if that's because it's not it's not a real array. I'll, I'll try converting it to an array using array.from. That might fix that error. Oh yeah, that's looking good. So you can see we've got a list of files here. What we can do is we can add a little kind of header here. And you can see where, because of this uh, little bit of syntax here, we're conditionally rendering this entire section. So we're only going to render this whole section once the user has selected the files. So we've got files to upload, one, two, three, exciting stuff. And again, you could put you could put the file size here. You could put other information about the file. I'm not going to go to that extent yet. Later on, I want to come back and I want to do heaps of refinements on this user interface and make it look beautiful and all that stuff. But, you know, we're trying to achieve a goal here and I'm running out of time in this in this live stream session. So I always have a, have a time limit and uh, I'm always working against the clock trying to get this code to work and trying to get it to, to do what I, what I aim to do for the session anyway. Now what I want to do is... Once we've got some files here, I'm going to have a button to upload them. So just make a real simple plain old button called Upload. To see that, of course, you've got to actually select some files. Yep, so we've got an upload there. And uh, what are we going to do on the click event is uh, on upload files. So this is the function that we're going to add, the event handler, to upload some files, the files that have been set in state. And uh, I'll just make sure that I can actually see the files at this point. And uh, make sure that the event handler that I expect to be called is being called. It's always useful to know that every single step of the way, you can add a console log and just check that, you know, the intermediate steps work. It can be very useful to know that you can do that, you know, for those times when you actually do run into problems. So we've got an upload button, I'll click the upload button, and we've got on upload files, and we've got a bunch of files printed out, so we've achieved that step. Now at this point, I'm going to need Axios. Now, I already installed Axios in the previous session, so we just have to actually use it here. And we're going to have to do something like um, loop over our files. So 
store each file in this dot state or of each file in the files. Uh, okay. And I'll just take the simple steps again. I'll just log it. So to make sure that we can loop over the files, I'll just log it. And uh, sorry, the file, not the files. And uh, I'll log each uh, file name as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of this state logging here as well because that's making things a little bit confusing. Let's try this again. Select a photo. Oh, I've just got one. Actually, I want to select multiple here. And I'm gonna upload. And you can see that for each one, we've printed out the file name. And, and the file object, the file details. So we've got three files, so that's working good. So now what I want to do here is an uh, Axios post and just await the result of that, I think. So I just auto-completed uh, the import for Axios, you can see up here. I was just typing it in and Visual Studio Code auto-completed it for me. Again, saving a bit of time, not having to manually import stuff. This is where I need my base URL again, which I'm. This is this is a bad practice, um, and I'm going to fix this in the next session. But I'm just going to copy this from file to file, just in the interest of uh, of speed. So I've replicated this base URL kind of in multiple files now in this project, and in the next session I will show you how to kind of rectify that situation because it's not it's not ideal, and I probably would have fixed it by now if I wasn't uh, up against the clock. So I'm uploading an asset to my back end. At this point, I can actually go back to my VS Code REST client script that I was using to upload assets when testing the back end. So I can just see the thing, the kind of things that I need here to be able to um, upload this. I might, might also put, even because I've got no progress indicator yet, I might just put a console log in here to say that uh, um, I'm uploading this file. Just to make sure that this is all going through sort of as planned and that it has, at this point, we have uploaded it successfully. So I need to make this, this function or this event handler async because I'm using the uh, await keyword. For the body of the post, I'm uploading the file. It's that simple. For the configuration of the, of the HTTP post, I want to set some headers. One is file name. So that's one that I'm pulling out in the back end in order to know the name of the file. Also the content type, which is file type. So that's provided for us. You can, If you console log each file, you can see that information. We also need to tell the back end the width and the height. I'm just going to hard code that just for now, and we'll, and we'll, we'll, we'll fix that proper, properly soon. Maybe in the next session, actually, we'll, we'll, we'll fix that because I am running out of time. So that's going to be the wrong width and the height, obviously. That's, but it's a stepping stone. It's a stepping stone. Um, it's a step in the right direction. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to restart my backend because I want to. I'll, basically, I want to resetting the backend like this will actually just reset the development database. So I'm going to have a clean, um, a clean database. That, that way, when I upload fo these photos to it, I will know that they won't be kind of you know, any of the test data that I uploaded before. So I'm just, I'm just going to verify that because I don't want to confuse myself here. So I'm going to run this um, HTTP get retrieve assets and make sure that there's no assets in the database. And then I will upload my files in the front end. Let's, let's try that out. So fingers crossed there will not be any errors and we'll get some photos uploaded to our back end. Click the upload button. No errors happened. This is looking good. It said um, uploaded you know, all three of these files. I'm just gonna, gonna run my script in the back end. So I'll just do a check here. So that's looking good. I'm just gonna make, maximize that so we can see it. Yep, we've got image one, image two, image three. Content type looks right. The width and height are all hard-coded. We hard-coded that in front end to 255, 255. We'll fix that. I think we'll fix that in the next session because like I'm, I am truly out of time. Let's go back to the gallery page. Funnily enough, they still look the same as before, even though, I'd, uh, even though I've set the width and the height to 255. I was expecting them to come out like a little bit um, like square. Because because the aspect ratio, so something strange happened there that I that I did not expect. These are definitely in the back end. They're all set to two five five two five five. But I think that's a wrap for today. Anyway, that was a good session. So I'm doing these live streams to support my book Rapid Full Stack Development. You can find it at rapidfullstackdevelopment.com. I'm going to be back in 48 hours, and we're going to finish this. That that will be the last session, even if it takes me a little bit longer than normal. The next session will be the last session in the series. Uh, we've got a bunch of uh, loose ends to fix. We're going to fix that within the height. We're going to compute the width and the height of the image in the front end and then send that information to the back end. We're going to make the gallery use a, a React ref to, to compute the actual width of the gallery so that those photos get nicely aligned along the right-hand side. And we're also going to try like uploading a whole load of photos to it to test it. And uh, there's a few other loose ends we've got to deal with as well, but that's coming in 48 hours. So please, uh, please come back for the last episode. Thanks for watching.